Hello everyone and a very good morning or afternoon depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you very much for coming along to this webinar introducing the new research and writing skills for dissertations and projects and introduction collaboration. We should be taking about 45 minutes of your time today including an opportunity for a designated question and answer session at the end. If you are familiar with the GoToMeeting software that we are using, you might know that there is a questions option as part of the panel on the right hand side of your screen near the bottom. If you would like to ask questions as and when they occur to you, please feel free to type them up and send them over via the pane there and we're quite happy to take those as we're going through. So firstly, just a couple of introductions. That's me, Sarah Vaughan, on the right-hand side. I work for Epigeum, the organization that put together the online courses, and I look after the webinars as well. A large part of my role is looking after our collaboration and implementation workshops, as well as our product launches and online events such as this. I'll let Annie in the middle and Gina on the far left introduce themselves now. So hi, I'm Annie. I'm the Marketing Communications Executive at Epigeum. And my role means I'm responsible for promoting Epigeum's courses and collaborations through a variety of media. Hello, I'm Gina. I'm one of the lead advisors for the course. I'm the head of the Centre for Learning and Teaching at the University of Brighton and have quite a lot of my own undergraduates. So just a quick look at the agenda before we get started. Um, so first we'll look at Epigeum itself. We're the organization that put together the programs through a collaborative model, which is quite unique. So I will show you a short video that explains how this approach works. Then we'll move on to Gina's presentation, where she will talk about her vision and thoughts that underpin this program. And then Annie will talk to you in a little bit more depth about the program overview, pedagogical approach, and course features of the research and writing skills for dissertations and projects program. Following this, we will show you an existing Epigeum course so you can get a feel for what that might look like. In this case, another studying program called Avoiding Plagiarism. We will then wrap up with a question and answer session. As I mentioned at the beginning, please do feel free to type up your questions in the questions panel as the webinar progresses. So a little bit about Epigeum. We were founded in 2005 as a spin-out originally from Imperial College London. Our two founders created the company in response to what they felt was a lack of timely support for researchers. One of our founders was doing a PhD at the time while working, and he came across issues that he wanted and needed to be advised on. And it would either be that there would be a face-to-face -face course in three months' time, or that there was inadequate material online that didn't quite fit what he needed. So he saw this as an opportunity to work with universities to create supported materials for researchers, particularly PhD students and postdocs like himself. And that's where we started, in this sort of research arena within higher education. And in the 10 years since, we have expanded to studying programs, courses for students, and teaching programs, programs for staff. We were acquired by Oxford University Press in May of this year. Oxford University Press are actually a division of Oxford University, so we're still within the not-for-profit organization in a higher education context, and still very much focused on creating high-quality materials. To date, in the decades since we have been formed, we have created over 78 online courses across 12 different programs, and we currently have seven in development. We're an increasingly globally focused organization and have worked with over 260 universities across 29 different countries worldwide to date. We've worked with many in Australasia as well, and this is a map to show you what countries we have been involved with in the development of our courses. So now I would like to show a short video which will explain our development process to you. The story of an Epigeum course. We come up with an idea and we consult widely to develop and fine tune it. We commission a team of expert authors to write it and a team of expert reviewers to help them. We commission a lead advisor who gives strategic vision and leadership. And we bring together a team of universities who form a development group to give feedback on our plans and prototypes and to make sure the product meets their needs. The collaborations we build are drawn from across the world and often involve input from over 50 academics as well as our team of in-house specialists. Because we believe that collaboration and iteration are the key to producing truly innovative and effective products. So we bring everyone together for a launch workshop at the start of each project. 
It's a great mixing pot where the creative juices can flow and expertise can be shared. We provide a week-long training course for our writing team to make sure they're able to get the best out of the online medium. And we provide plenty of opportunities for sampling and feedback along the way through a detailed peer review process. In fact, a typical product goes through at least five iterations before it's ready to be built by our in-house developers. Together, we're more than the sum of our parts, and our unique and rigorous product development process gives all collaborators access to groundbreaking courses they couldn't have created alone. Here's what some of our customers have to say. Our products are used by over 200 institutions in 25 different countries. To find out more about the collaborations we're currently building, click on the Next Steps button or get in touch with us direct. We'd love to work with you. So just to um, summarize the content of the video you have seen, uh, the development group of up to 20 universities come together and share their experience at a workshop that help us create a really great online course. We recruit authors all under the guidance of a lead advisor. In the case of this program we are discussing today, Professor Gina Whisker. The lead advisor is the person who has the expertise in the area who can lead and shape the vision for the program. We have a meticulous review process in place which allows the development group to look at the content of the courses, check that it matches their expectations and comment on it as well. Thus the development group of universities are the early adopters who get to use the program and implement them at their universities. And then we make it available to other universities on a license basis, which is what we will be able to do with the completed program. So hopefully that's given you a bit of background to HEPA-GM and how we put the courses together. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions on that process, but for now I will hand over to Professor Gina Whisker to talk to you about the foundations of the program and her vision for it. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm really pleased to be working with the program because it gives us an opportunity to work with colleagues who are engaged with students who are learning to become researchers, developing research and inquiry skills um, internationally and locally and put together our ideas and build a course that really works for us and our students. So this is a great opportunity to work with state-of-the-art um, Ian blended learning and use it with human beings so that they do get the benefit and become inquiring learners and researchers or co-constructors of knowledge which is the uh, current major term. So what I'm going to look at really is the background to why we would like our students to develop research skills and some of the ways in which we help them to do so. It's going to be a little bit of research background in there. Uh, and then I want you to be starting to think about how this relates to your work, how you might use it, and moving on particularly to think about the dissertation, the project, or the honours year, if it's, it's an Australian context, the capstone project. So we're thinking about students being co-constructive of knowledge being researchers or inquiring learners, maybe the word research sounds a little bit scary to undergraduates, but actually we're talking about people who ask questions and who want to find out for themselves and make new knowledge for themselves and not just therefore take in and regurgitate information. So they're becoming active learners. And Angela Brew and um, Alan Jenkins and Mick Healy are leaders in, the, in, in thinking behind this area, so I've quoted them a few times. And what Brew says is involving students in inquiry in research is a way of improving their learning and motivating them. So actually it's about active learning, it's about identifying ways in which we can work with our students to seize and support learning opportunities to develop a range of generic and subject specific research skills, because obviously they're different of their scientists to those who are social scientists to those who are maybe fashion designers or arts and humanities students. Many of the skills are generic, they're about asking questions, about going out and finding, about sifting what they find, focusing it on their research questions so they can address it, not necessarily answer it. 
there are all sorts of skills about managing what you find and then about writing it and communicating it to others. Those are probably generic skills, but if you're dealing with um, young scientists, then they're dealing with experimental skills. If you're dealing with social scientists, they're going to have to do things like interview people. If you're dealing with fashion designers, they're going to make, and their research will be part of the making. So they are nuanced differently according to our different students, but it's about inquiring and being very excited about creating knowledge. And I think this is the most important thing that students can actually learn from us and with us. That's how to ask the questions, how to address them, how to do the research themselves, and how to communicate what they find. So if we think about linking research and teaching, we're moving away from an information transfer, teacher-focused approach to one which is student-focused and starts to get students thinking, asking questions, theorizing, working conceptually. And that's a picture of the TARDIS, but it isn't. It's my version of the TARDIS. So like the TARDIS in Doctor Who, I think engagement in research offers more than it seems to. It looks as though it's another exercise, perhaps, or something you add on to a class, or that, that dissertation that comes at the end of three years. But it causes our students and ourselves to fundamentally question established ways of perceiving reality and of treating what knowledge is. So knowledge is an ongoing construction, something they're making something they're asking questions about, something they're finding out about making, not just something they're taking in and giving back. So students are contributing to constructing knowledge through their research skills. It's a way of perceiving reality, as Ron Barnett says. There's a couple of slides now, this one and the next one. If you have a look at the top bit, students become participants in the research. They engage, on the left-hand side, with research discussions. So we talk with them about what they're researching, what we're researching, how to go about research. And then on the right-hand side at the top, they undertake research and inquiry themselves. So they're not just doing what's at the, on the bottom of this um, diagram, and that is learning about what we're doing. They're actually doing the development and doing the learning and doing the researching themselves. But we help them with the bottom right-hand side, and that is developing the research and inquiry skills and techniques to do that. So we're working towards more of a student-led research, learning, orientation, all the way through the three or four years they're with us, with a particular reference to when they construct a dissertation, a project, or some kind of capstone activity at the end of their degree. And they're at the top again, pursuing information, pursuing ideas, pursuing questions. And then they're on the right-hand side, authoring. They're discovering things, they're active participants, and they write and they make and then they share. But we help them at the bottom identify the questions and how to go about asking them and answering them using research skills, and we help them with producing something which can be shared with others, which is well expressed. So uh, in order to develop students' research learning, we need a research active curriculum all the way through the three or four years they're with us, and teaching, learning, and assessment, which encourage research-based practices. It's quite difficult for students to suddenly hit the third year, or maybe the honours year in Australia, and be asked to do a dissertation, suddenly ask new questions, create knowledge themselves, if they haven't been doing it for the, for the full three or four years. So they're using their resources interactively, and we're helping foster this inquiry approach, this inquiry approach which has the ability and the skills to enable them to ask and answer the questions. So we're working towards, I think, a research active curriculum. So all undergraduate students in all higher education should experience learning through and about research and inquiry all the way through, through a research active curriculum. Things that happen all the way through the three years, but particularly culminate in the dissertation. And we embed research-oriented learning and teaching activities, so asking them to find out, asking them to ask the questions, to work together to discover, to forage for information, to manage it, plan, analyze it, and then present what they, what they find uh, in an articulate, communicative fashion, so through focused support. So some of the stages then of researchers learning that I think students can engage with is, first of all, identifying problems or questions. What is it that really fascinates them? They start to work together with others and then also work on their own asking these questions, finding out, starting to solve the problems, develop the problem-solving um, strategies which will help them after their degree. Because one of the main things about um, 
developing students as researchers is that they take these active skills of inquiry, this autonomy to be able to ask questions and find out and then put knowledge together in, in a form that can be communicated to others. They learn these skills and they're transferable after the degree. So they find out information, they find out how to manage it, they find out how to design and manage a project from beginning to end so that they're not just asking a question, that they're actually in the end coming up with something they can share with other people. Through, through all the stages of a project, they're learning project management skills as well as inquiry and research skills. And they're learning to be uh, three things that they can definitely sell to an employer at the end. They're ideas people. They know how to action research and uh, action the acquisition, the construction, the management of knowledge and then they finish off because they finish off a large piece of work and hand it in. These are essential, these three skills, this throughput. So they learn to write and present and to share and then act on their work and hope that other people will act on it as well. All of this involves curriculum development to embed research and inquiry and critical thinking right from the start so that they develop thinking skills, creative problematizing and ideas generation and they can find out information, gather it, process it, manage it, use it. So just thinking, you know, how we will put into the development towards dissertation and the all three or four years of, of the curriculum, how one might embed these uh, research inquiry skill development is, I think, an issue that underpins this program and then peaks when we talk about helping the students develop those dissertations or projects. So they become reflectively aware, they build on their generic and subject specific research skills and pull them together into the dissertation. They develop communication throughout the three years in different forms, including presentations, essays, projects and dissertations. And they have opportunities to show their growth, to show their reflective learning, their independent learning. And that carries them forward, as I said earlier, beyond the degree so that they're employable and so that they actually continue to be interested and want to inquire, find out, make and share through the rest of their active lives. They have to ask questions about time and space, values, what is knowledge, or, uh, how, how that's constructed in the world, and, and where they are as knowledge creators, as people who question and actually come up with some solutions. So all of these are really fundamental skills. It's not just a course. It's about learning to be a constructor of knowledge, an active learner in the world. And they end up with new, firmly-based confidence, contributions to knowledge and ownership of that knowledge and processes, and communication of that knowledge to others. So why develop them as researchers? What are the skills and outcomes? What are the benefits? These are, this is a little set of questions I thought I might nudge you with. With the final one is, how do you develop your students as researchers, and if so, where and how? So perhaps be thinking about that while I roll on through the next few slides so that at the end we can think why are we developing the students as researchers and co-researchers and how, to, how do we do it and how might this course help us do that better. So research learning I think is about attitudes, inquiring, creating and sharing, about understandings, critical thinking, problematizing given arguments and interpretations, always saying could we do this another way, is, is that right? How do we do this? And for me, it links in with the idea of threshold concepts, which is about how different disciplines see the world and construct knowledge differently. So that goes back to me saying there's generic skills, but there also will be discipline-specific skills because a history student goes about finding out and constructing knowledge differently from a chemistry student. So how do we construct knowledge differently in the different disciplines? And I think that's a conceptual leap for students to ask those questions and then start to answer them. And they also need the skills. So it's not just theorizing and conceptualizing. It's about how do you focus on issues and problems? What is a, a problem that's, that's doable? How do you ask a question that you might actually frame and manage and not just leave it in the air? Uh, know where to look, how to look, how to find, what to do with what you find. Select, focus, theorize, conceptualize, interpret, manage. All these stages of not just gathering stuff, but putting it together so that it forms an argument, a structured argument, well expressed, makes a case, has constructed knowledge. Finally then, being able to communicate it. 
So here's some characteristics of critical thinking that underpin students developing as researchers. The final one being creativity because they're making something. And these research oriented critical thinking characteristics underpin the program. So the skills, the analysis, the organization, the different ways of going about deductive, inductive research, working with other people's views and arguments. These characteristics of critical thinking that go beyond the degree and into their lives are developed through undertaking research, particularly when constructing a larger project like a dissertation. So some more comments about building the relationship between teaching and research, emphasizing the construction of knowledge by students rather than imparting it, and ensure that they experience the process of artistic and scientific productivity. They're producing in their disciplines, they're making, and they understand how to do that and how to share it. So here's some strategies for linking research and, and teaching. How do we encourage the students to become researchers? So starting research-oriented activities early in their studies on information seeking, asking questions, creating knowledge. Uh, so they get a sense that knowledge is always under construction. It isn't fixed. Facts aren't fixed. We keep discovering new things. How can they devise their own questions? How can they construct a proposal? How can they construct a dissertation and a project proposal? Because these are models of constructing proposals which then help you manage the process of the research and manage the communication of what you find. And some things that, that we might do along the way as they develop dissertations is get them to do an annotated bibliography, pick out a few of the sources that they think are key to their thinking and their questioning and write about how and why they're going to use them so they're being active, so they're engaging with, with other people's knowledge and making their own and maybe critically evaluating other models of research. Have a look at how other people put together essays and reports. Unpick them, see how you might do it yourself. Getting students to think of themselves as being active members in a community of scholars, not just people who transmit and ingest knowledge. Encouraging them to feel part of the wider community of scholars. As young researchers, they get in touch with other people. They think with other people. They share information, ideas, and arguments, and construct ideas and arguments because they're sharing. And I think we need to help them to develop that sense that they're in a dialogue. They're in a learning dialogue with other knowledge and with other people. They're not just passive recipients of knowledge. And to encourage and assist them to develop and present and publish their work. They might not publish their work to, to a, a grand international journal, but they might be able to share it perhaps in an in-house journal uh, or online in, in your department so that uh, the work that they do towards a dissertation and a project can be read by others. So they present the resulting work then to current and prospective students as evidence of how you can make active contributions to the field. And I think getting students to share and develop models means that they're part of this research dialogue that, that we're part of as well. So it's a synergistic system then. The students are active participants and not passive recipients. An inquiry, investigation, discovery at the heart of what we're doing with them. Um, whether they, we, we're working on funded research and they're co-constructing knowledge as part of those research projects with us, which is a science model, or whether they're undertaking their own inquiry um, and asking their own questions about an area which would be more of a social science and a, and a humanities and arts model, although actually, as we might have funded projects, a student's dissertations can form part of finding, acquiring, and making the knowledge on those funded projects, getting them to be part of the whole construction of knowledge in something larger would be very exciting for them. And the Boyd Commission, as long ago as 2000, said that the teaching responsibility of the university is to make all its students participants in this shared mission of constructing knowledge and sharing it. How can we do it? Interactive lectures, online learning, which is what Epigeum does really well, I think, group tasks and interactions, and then um, activities that enable students to become researchers. The courses that are featured in the Research and Writing Skills for Dissertation and Projects program, I think, hit pretty much all the skills and the development that students are going to need to be active researchers 
and to produce dissertations and projects and then go on carrying on and asking those questions and knowing how to find out and to write up afterwards. So um, systematically these different co um, short courses in this program are aimed to uh, enable students to engage with examples of preparing their research, managing their supervisor, project managing, managing their time, engaging with the thoughts and arguments of other people in a literature review and knowing how their ideas fit into a dialogue, the ethics of research, what we can do, what we can't do, what we need to be careful about, um, keeping um, things confidential, um, the kind of work you, you shouldn't do because it's harmful. Ethics is very important in research. And then how to go about it, research methodology and methods, the design, the qualitative research methods and the quantitative research methods. And each of our students will take a kind of different balance and a different way through this. But uh, one of the things that the course does is allow them to see a variety of research methods so that they can select and defend what they choose as appropriate for the questions they're asking. And another time they might choose others. So it's important that they see what the different methods are enabling them to do to ask and answer. And then writing, how you structure and write your dissertation. Develop the argument, develop the, the story of this piece of work that's going to communicate your research to other people. So these are the courses. And really what I want you to do is to think about how these can help you help your students develop as inquiring learners, as researchers who construct knowledge and share it with others. Because it's essential that we get the uh, everything in the, in the right order and that students can really develop through these. So I just leave you with a question and then, then we can share. I ne you need to think about the context and the challenges at your own institution and how this course with all those embedded values and practices could help you with your students. How can it help meet your needs? If there's anything that needs changing, perhaps, or you know, how are you going to use it when, it when it's up and running? So those, I leave you on those questions. I think that's the last slide. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a bit about the research and writing skills for dissertations and projects collaboration. So a bit of background to the project. As we previously mentioned, the publishing team at Epigeum works closely with institutions to identify needs and challenges universities are currently facing. And undergraduate skills is an area we have recently decided to build on. This area of undergraduate research skills was identified as an interesting project for us, especially as support for the development of undergraduate research skills has been growing over the last few years. Associations like the HEA have been developing resources to support the embedding of research-informed teaching into the curriculum. While most higher education institutions are incorporating research-informed teaching throughout the degree, the most common large-scale piece of research a student will undertake is their final year dissertation or capstone project. The overall aim of this research project is to synthesize and apply knowledge and experiences gained from their entire undergraduate experience to help them use the project to transition into the workplace or further study. However, there are a number of challenges facing students and staff. Students often panic at the magnitude of research projects. There may be differences between departments in the level of information given to students. Students might also be accessing support too late. There can be difficulty in reaching a wide number of students across campus. And finally, is provision scalable? There is a need for flexible training and an online solution would enable staff to use contact time to focus on queries relating to student-specific research problems. So we have signed up two lead advisors to be part of this collaboration, and we are delighted to have Gina Whisker involved with this project. We also have Professor Nicholas Wallyman from Oxford Brookes University on board, who will assist Gina and the Epigeum team to shape this strategic vision for the courses. So here is an outline of the suggested curriculum for the programme. The current proposal is the programme will have five hours of course content broken into 10 30-minute courses, and there will also be 10 hours of additional offline content. The 10 courses here cover all key elements relevant to a dissertation or final project, and the modular structure allows a flexible learning route depending on discipline. So you can see here there will be courses on topics such as the literature review, research methodology, and structuring and writing your dissertation or project. So here are some of the features of the research and writing skills program. 
The programme will enable institutions to provide campus-wide training for undergraduate research skills to support students during their final year research piece. The programme will consist of 10 accessible 30-minute courses on the key skills areas that students struggle with. The courses will feature examples from a range of disciplines, along with videos from students sharing their advice and experience, and examples of actual dissertations and projects. An employability theme will be woven throughout to help students articulate and demonstrate the transferable skills they are developing. And finally, here's some information about the proposed approach and pedagogy of the online courses. The courses will feature regular assessment, so a clear assessment criteria based on the learning outcomes will act as a benchmark for students' progress. Assessment could comprise the following elements, um, performance-based assessments at the end of each module, self-assessment checklists, course diagnostic tests. Um, another feature will be research-based pedagogy. This will need to reflect the course content and should include learning by investigating and discovering, learning from personal exchange and debate, and also learning by problem solving. Um, the courses will also feature a learning portfolio, including self-assessment documents, dissertation action plans, and evidence of work. And finally, another distinctive feature of this programme will be a shared social area developed as a community of practice for peers, tutors, careers advisors, and it should comprise a forum area to share learning portfolios, examples of work, queries, and advice. So I think it now will be a good time to show you what an Epigeum course looks like. So Sarah will be providing us with a demonstration of our popular student-facing course, Avoiding Plagiarism. So I'll just hand over to Sarah now. Thank you, Annie. Um, so now I'd like to give you a demonstration of the Avoiding Plagiarism course so you can get a feel for what our courses look like and also some of the features that we include. So Avoiding Plagiarism is a, pro is a program that we released about a year ago to an international market and we are currently working on various translations that will be released later this year. So this is our Epigeum portal where we host our courses. Most institutions prefer to have them in their own LMS, such as Moodle or Blackboard, but this is in our portal, and you can see how you and your students will be able to access the courses when you log in. So I'll start with the welcome screen here. This is what we have at the beginning of all of our courses to set the scene for the students taking the courses. Here is a list of the authors, those who have written the materials, the learning outcomes, the structure of the course itself, which details what it will include, such as the orientation, the course files, and the course quiz. Some of the highlights to look out for, and also a list of all the supporting institutions who have helped create the course. So, as I mentioned earlier, we do create our programs in collaboration with a lot of different universities, and these are listed here on every welcome screen of our courses. Starting with the first main screen of the first course, I'll begin by highlighting a couple of features relevant to all our courses and screens. At the top of every screen, we have a learning outcome so that students are aware of what is going to be covered in the screen and what they should have learned or should be able to do after completing the screen. We also offer an estimated duration for each screen. Here it's six minutes, so that students have an idea of how long it is likely to take to work through the screen. Now moving into the main screen content, this screen introduces the student voice into the course. So we start with a text entry activity in which students taking the course can consider some key questions and note down their answers. This encourages reflection on their own existing knowledge and it also encourages them to note down their thoughts and keep the learning active. Then they move on to watch a video in which real students give their thoughts on the same questions. We try to use video as much as possible in our courses as it really helps to bring the material to life. This particular instance offers course users the opportunity to compare and contrast their own responses with those of the students featured in the video. Video is short and vox pop style and it is engaging and interesting for students taking the course to hear what their peers have to say. It's also worth noting here that all our videos have a transcript. 
All course screens also have a text version, so the course is fully accessible for those using screen readers or who are unable to use the interactive version for any reason. You'll see on the right hand side of each screen we have these little boxes or pods which contain supplementary information, links, definitions, activities and so on. The type shown here is an optional activity pod which invites students taking the course to extend or apply or reflect on their learning in some way. In this case we've suggested that they set up a discussion group with other students taking the course so that they can discuss issues that come up as the course progresses. This can help e-learning students feel like they are in more of a learning community. So I've chosen this screen as it shows off a nice feature that we try to incorporate into many of our courses. See, these comic strips help to explain key learning points. We've had feedback from students who have taken the previous version of this course requesting more imagery and we found these comic strips to be effective and engaging in other Epigean programs. There's also a nice example of one of our interactive activities on this screen. So this is a decision tree um, which students taking the course can follow to help them decide how to appropriately reference their sources. They are asked a number of questions and then answer the questions yes or no to find out the correct course of action. This kind of activity helps to build up a thought process for students. So this is an example of a review um, of a screen which provides an opportunity for students taking the course to apply, test and consolidate their learning. There are two quizzes on this screen drawing together the concepts covered in the unit. So this is a multiple choice quiz in which the user is presented with an example piece of material um, and then they have to decide whether or not they, want to, they need to acknowledge the material if used in their work. So users can see their score as they work through the quiz and receive feedback on each question. This second activity um, presents students with a piece of academic writing followed by various revisions of the text. The students have to decide whether each revision consists of plagiarism or acceptable usage and feedback is provided for each example. This kind of interactivity is a great way to keep students engaged and helps them to apply the, the principles they have read about to some real world examples. Students can select an appropriate disciplinary area from the activity menu so they get to work through examples more relevant to their course of study. This is a feature that we incorporate into many of our courses. So on this final screen I'd like to show you, um, this ex screen explains the differences between um, citations and references and how to compile them. So again, examples are taken from a variety of disciplines and this kind of activity keeps the learning active and engaging. You can see that there are lots of different pods on this screen. So here there is the useful links Pod. There are lots of these pods throughout the course and these offer links to useful online resources that students can consult. This is an excellent way of providing an opportunity to explore topics in more depth without bloating the core course material. We create these pods in such a way that links can be replaced if or when they become inactive. So, and then there's the Your Context pods. So in default mode, these encourage students to find out their institutional departmental guidelines in relation to a particular learning point. However, these pods are customizable, so universities can insert institution-specific texts or links to the relevant resources, so students have all the necessary information to hand. Finally, on this screen, I'd like to point out the Do This icon. Uh, we use this icon as a means of highlighting points of particular importance for students. So I hope I've given you a good taste of some of the pedagogical features uh, with this demonstration. If you have any questions, please do jot them down now or feel free to contact someone at Epigeum after the webinar. Um, so I'd like to address a couple of the questions that have just come through. Um, so Gina, this is one for you. Um, as an assessor, what would be the best ways for us to assess undergraduate research? A few modes of assessment when you talked about the course. 
Um, I think ways in which we should assess their research uh, around everything from getting them to self-reflect on why they did what they did and how well they thought it worked, so self-reflection and embedding that in. And the other thing would be to um, develop the, the research checklist, really, of identifying the problems right the way through to um, presenting in a clear, articulated, well-structured argument with claims and evidence in place. So using those sorts of criteria for good research that we've been developing and exploring the students' research uh, and seeing how they have achieved those criteria. Thanks, Gina. Um, Annie, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, so can the program be used for any discipline? Um, yes, examples come from all faculty areas, with further examples from other disciplines in the further reading section. Uh, we will also put a learning route for different faculty disciplines into the courses. Um, the course common assessment material? Uh, yes, uh, self-assessment, uh, learning portfolio with evidence of work. All of these refer to the program's learning outcomes. And finally, how long should students spend on each model, module? So that would probably be about 45 minutes to an hour of core material per module. Um, I think that's all for questions for the moment. If you do think of anything that you would like to ask uh, uh, me or Annie or Gina, please just send us an email. So at the screen right now, you can see my colleague Wendy Harbottle's contact details. Um, some of you may have already been in touch with her in regards to this collaboration. Um, so that's her email address and telephone number. Wendy can give you a lot more detail in regards to pricing and timescales for the collaboration, so please do contact her if you have any questions regarding the program. She's also able to provide you with a trial for one of our courses if you would like to get a feel for how they look and function. We will also send out a recording of this presentation so you can share it with the relevant colleagues who may find this of interest to them as well. Um, thank you very much for listening in today. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.